NelsonTripod.com bringing you another original. It's making great. A family day out to the circus sounds like fun, right? Walk into the huge marquee, grab a drink and some nuts before settling in to watch the show. Cheer from the crowd and watch the lion tamers, trapeze artists, tightrope walkers. Oh, and of course the abducted farm boy who gets smashed into smithereens by a giant dragon. Don't you just love the circus? Welcome to Panarium, an 8-bit carnival of death, with you, young Willy, the main attraction. The game begins with our introduction into the world of Panarium. You play as a young lad called Willy. Willy stumbles into an open trailer one day and ends up being abducted by the evil, moustache-twirling ringleader of a circus that's designed to enthrall and delight the audience. A circus where most of the acts end up as a rather unpleasant stain on the floor. I enjoyed the deliciously dark humour, most of it delivered by the ringleader of the circus, from the little jabs at the previous contestants who never made it past the training, to demanding that you create his favourite moisturiser. There's so much personality in Panarium that it's hard to dislike, and I for one think that Self Made Miracle, the game's developer, can hold their heads high in this regard, amid the myriad of mediocre games that share the genre. The campaign mode will see you training for, and eventually attending, the Grand Circus. There are three arenas, two of which are available after unlocking them through completing levels. In each level you'll be given an objective. There are a few objectives that the game will throw at you. Smashing barrels is a common one, as well as pressing a sequence of buttons in a certain order, or, as I said before, collecting items for a dark potion. <coughs> Moisturiser. All of this can be accomplished by jumping on various platforms that will litter the level. In a nice mechanic, the screen wraps, so if you jump off the right edge of the screen, you'll show up on the left end. The challenge in Perineum isn't accomplishing the objectives, in fact, that's the easiest part. Each stage of the level will throw different dangers at you. These are usually in the form of weapon rails. Most of the game will see you dodging death from above and below, and when the game feels really sadistic, it will put killer spikes at each edge of the screen that prevents the wrapping, and it will have no problem slamming those spikes into the middle of the screen. The weapons that will plague you throughout gameplay are varied and offer a huge challenge at times. Most of the weapons will kill you outright, at the slightest of touches. Rockets, machine guns, ice spikes and spinning blades are all very common. Individually, these obstacles are bad enough. Some weapons don't have a lethal effect of their own, but will actively hinder your evasion of their more dangerous brethren. Pipes that pump water will push you to your doom or into harm's way, whereas a pink glue gun totally ruins the flow of gameplay and will inevitably have you making a mess out of poor Willy more times than you can remember. Panarium doesn't let you rest on your laurels. After each death, the sequence of enemy combinations can change, meaning you can't rely on repetition to memorise your way to success. In truth, I found that Panarium doesn't allow any thinking time. The gameplay is so frantic and fast-paced, and death so close at hand, that any time I actively tried to think about what I was going to do, I would immediately slam into a spike, be blown up by a rocket, or crushed by a giant bowling ball. When I was in the zone, it was simply my unthinking mind and my reaction speed that carried me to victory. I love Panarium, but it made it clear that Panarium doesn't love me. The gameplay can be brutally hard at times, with levels that genuinely felt impossible. I spent over half an hour trying to avoid Chinese dragons as they launched themselves at me from what seemed like all sides. Panarium expects you to die over and over again. Hell, it even has an achievement for dying 50 times an achievement that I picked up embarrassingly early in the game. The only real problem that I found with the controls was that Willie would often refuse to double jump, and that always sent me straight to my death. Outside of the campaign, we have Arcade and the multiplayer modes. The Arcade is lacklustre and simply asks you to smash barrels and the like until you die. It was nice to see how long I could survive, but didn't really add much to the game as a whole. There are upgrades that you can buy to help you in Arcade mode, but it didn't hold me for long. I did love the multiplayer. It's local and it can be played cooperatively or competitively. I had great fun playing with a friend of mine, but if I had one complaint, it's that the sole objective is to stand on two buttons simultaneously. And while it was fun for 10 minutes at a time, it will lack longevity. The soundtrack is brilliant too. With retro style circus music and nice voice acting in the cutscenes, it really did add a layer over and above the generic. I have to admit to growing tired of the 8-bit visuals. 
This isn't so much a complaint about Panarium, but the market as a whole. There are so many of these games, with this art and visual style, that it's losing its appeal. Panarium follows a trend in the indie market, one that I'm beginning to grow rather concerned over. Now, so we're clear, I enjoyed Panarium. It has many positive aspects and only a few negative ones. However, with the flood of retro style, low resolution games that are being released of late, it makes it all the harder for a decent game to stand out. There's no shortage of games in a similar state as Panarium, but there's so many, it means that the semi-nostalgic thrill of playing games of this nature has worn off. Panarium is a fun little game. It has a brilliant sense of humour and doesn't take itself too seriously. The game can be brutally hard, but it can be amazingly rewarding once you overcome a difficult level. The soundtrack is very fitting to the setting and by and large the control system works well, with the exception of the double jump not registering sometimes. In the flood of indie titles that are being released now, I'm not sure Panarium stands out enough amongst the herd. Panarium is one of many 2D 8-bit platformer games that are available on the Xbox One. It has a deliciously dark sense of humour and fundamental gameplay that is entertaining in small bursts, but it grows frustrating in longer sessions. It is a punishingly difficult game that wants you to know that it hates you. Panarium is a fun game, but it doesn't stand out of the crowd.